positive on the week. So that's been really terrific. Um, it's also been interesting because we have three different divisions. So we have the, the residential side, the commercial side, and the product side. And getting all the teams together on a Friday, everybody kind of gives their, you know, their wins for the week. It's been a challenge kind of running the product side of it because our, 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 our runs are being made in India and Nepal and we're across the pond on that. So that's been way, that's been their biggest challenges because India just went down on lockdown. So all of our clients, which are designers out there across the country are calling us, saying, what does this mean for our project? So it's, it's been a lot of open communication. And the best thing that you can do is just be honest. Um, because you, just letting people know we're all, the world's in this together. And I think that's a, a great side. Another thing we're doing is we're having a touch base with our clients, even if they're um, weekly touch base, I just call them and see how they're doing. And we're setting up weekly meetings with projects, even with clients. So it's kind of business as usual, as we see, it just happens to be, uh, we're all working remotely. So that's the, that's the biggest challenge. Tell us really quick, you know, I got the question, how many people uh, work in each of your offices, just so that, uh, just so that we know, you know, like of which size we are speaking. I have eight people in my office. So we all in from all of us, we have 41 people. Oh, God. Uh -huh. Thank you. And, and you, Tim? And we have, we have 12 in Los Angeles and three in Paris. Okay. You know, it's very interesting because, you know, also, you know, while I'm, while I'm listening to you guys and, uh, you know, I mean, we, we at Schumacher, we face the sim very similar issues, obviously. Um, I'm hearing that we all do daily meetings and we all do them via video camera. So I think for you guys out there, um, I would really suggest you do that. I think it also works very well for us. We actually do it in the morning, every morning at 30. You know, everybody gets stressed, everybody gets up, you know, on time. And the morning is fresh and, and you see each other. I think that's also something that, I, that, you, all, uh, that you all said about it. What, how do you, what do you suggest somebody who works alone that before, you know, had a structure also in the office, like how do you keep yourself just like, you know, going? What I would What's really been amazing. I'll go, go, ahead, go ahead. I think go what's ahead. been really go amazing ahead. is all the different um, webinars and different things such as this that you can join. Um, ASID is doing it, different design organizations. I mean, Schumacher is doing it, everyone's doing it. And to be able to see other people, hear what's going on in our industry, to read things like AD Pro, Business at Home, and all those things we get on our computers is super important. And I had a, an email from a designer I hadn't seen in five years reaching out to me about something. I think it's really important we stay in touch with all of ourselves, everybody. Absolutely, and that's exactly what I was gonna say is that I think that uh, individual designers, it's, you've, got, you've got other friends who are, who are working on their own and just create your own little groups, your own little Zoom groups or, or FaceTime, whatever it is. But it's so important to be now more than ever to be communicating with each other, to be talking and to be helping each other. This is this is truly when the rubber meets the road, where we can come together and show that we are together stronger than any of us. Put all the barriers down. Yeah. I mean, you know, getting together obviously, you know, is important, but we can only do that virtually. I mean, this business is so technical, you know, and you have samples and you have wood samples and you know, and you have paint colors that on camera look completely, I mean, we, we know all of those stories. We've all picked uh, the wrong color in our lives, even seeing it's life, you know? So um, how do you guys do that? Do you send each other samples around? Do you suddenly trust digital uh, well, thank, sheets? Like, what do you do? You and Schumacher and all the reps sending everything out. Thank God for FedEx and UPS and, you know, all those things. We've been really lucky getting a lot of samples sent to us and we're doing the same to our clients. How about you guys? Yeah, I, I find that uh, everybody's been working together amazingly. I think I've seen a community across the board because we're all in it together. Everybody must keep business as usual. And I know our teams are receiving fabric and samples. And what I've heard is, is that customer service is better than it's ever been. I think as people are so focused on the client, on not only from our suppliers, but we're also focusing on our own personal clients, our own personal employees. So I think everybody working together is because we're all in this and we're all successful. And I think what's going to come out of this is, is that we're going to see what a strong community that we do have and that we need to rely upon each other and really focus on, you know, what design is all about. What I, what's interesting is, is I find that actually people are working harder now 
it, than they were before because it just it's it, the logistics of getting things done are so much more difficult. Um, that it's 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 like you're working twice as hard to just get done what would what we sort of took for granted before. Um, so I've actually, as as a design head, I've sort of sort of said, okay, she, I've had to lower my expectations of of output and performance um, because it is more complex and more difficult to get things uh, get to, the, to go through the whole process. If we speak about your clients, um, you know, the homeowners. Um, I don't know. I would assume that probably all of them also prefer virtual meetings by now. Um, uh, you know, how do you set that up? How are they going increasingly digital or do they still prefer to touch samples or do you send them something prior? Like how, how do you manage the whole client side? Because um, I, I'm sure that's also difficult. And then they start shopping behind your back online now that they have so much time. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure there's like, that's so charged with new challenges. I would love if you could tell the community out there, you know, how you deal with that. Well, we've been pretty lucky. Um, so far, we've just been sending over hard, hard packets of materials and proposals and everything to people's homes. So we're keeping in touch with them via email, phone calls. We haven't FaceTimed many clients yet, but, um, you know, hopefully you've got trust with your clients that they're not shopping behind your back and you're beyond that. Um, but we've been really, we've been really fortunate. Things are still moving, still moving along. You know, we had, we had our first, uh, not first, we had a client meeting this week and it was via um, Zoom and we had fabrics out and I, my client, she kept, you can see her hands, she kept wanting to touch them. <laughs> it was driving her crazy. She was like going, I want to feel it. And she had felt it before, but she says, I need the comfort of to feel that fabric, even though I felt it already, she was, I want to feel what's going to, it was for her bed. And she was, I want to feel that to make, give me some comfort level. So it's interesting. So what you do is you just, you know, you get the samples, you send to the client and, and, you, and we've been doing it that way. Are you sending the samples prior? Or are you sending the samples after? Because I would also imagine, you know, like if they rip up, the boat, up you know, the box and they already start scheming themselves, they do not understand the story, you know, like what you can, what we've done too, we've done is we've said, please don't even open the box until we're online together. And then we, and we package it all by project area or area. And then we say, okay, now let's go through this. And we have a copy of everything we've sent them. So um, ideally we have a piece of the fabric or a, a, uh, the same tear sheet, but uh, at the very least we have a photocopy of the, of the fabric, for example. And we walk through with them so that we don't let them um, or at least hopefully they don't go ahead and do start ripping it off hard and, and, and taking everything and creating their own scheme. You know, we've worked yeah. this way in the past with long distance clients. So for us, it hasn't been an issue. You know, we've sent FedEx boxes of materials and done it online or over the phone before. So it's kind of business is normal in that respect for us. Interesting you know, thing, because, you know, I, by the, by the way, I'm reading all your questions. Some of the questions I'm waiting uh, to post because, you know, we're going to speak about that later and then I'm going to weave that in. So just that everybody knows I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing your questions. I got one other question and maybe that, that, that weaves into, into what you just want, also wanted to say, Timothy, is, you know, um, that somebody says, you know, do you really would do virtual design meetings with your clients? They can be so inefficient. Um, would you rather push it out or would you rather, you know, go and, and, and do it? So let me tell you, what, one thing I did, and I did it last Sunday, and I purposely did it on a Sunday uh, because I, I, I called every single client at home. And I just wanted to have a conversation with them, not just about the, their project, but just to get, sort of get a sense of their, get, take their temperature as to how they were feeling about the world and how they were feeling about their situations, et cetera. And I found that to be very, very helpful in terms of, um, uh, understanding them better, understanding the way they were feeling. And truly it was all over the board from people thinking this was the end of the world to people thinking it was totally overblown. Um, so there was a whole range. And then only then after we had that conversation, do we even start to talk about their individual projects and, and then sort of get, get a sense of, gee, are, do you want to put things on hold? Is, do you want to, do you want to uh, put aspects of your job on hold? And it was fascinating because in our in our conversations, all but only one client basically said, "I want to put things on hold," and everyone else sort of said, "Yes, we want it. We want to proceed as as well as you're able to." And 
And I found it- That's that, amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, what I thought was interesting was that I think that, that our clients, if you share with them some of the frustrations of, that we are facing as a designer, we're facing with short, with workrooms that are closed or with the fact that we're the, lo the logistics of how it becomes more complicated to do things, they actually are very understanding and they will, um, they actually will, I think, support us. I, I had one client who said, I'm just going to send you a check uh, because I don't want just and put it towards my, my future balances, but I don't want you guys to be having problems right now. I, I want to help you. Yeah, and I think that it's, it's that aspect of sharing with your clients on a personal level, how this is something that's affecting you and your firm um, and, and how their lives are affected. So it's bringing the personal aspect and not just focusing on the, um, the business aspect. I think that they're very appreciative of that. I thought what was really nice was we had several vendors reach out to us personally with a phone call saying, you know, we're here for you. How are you doing? And it really, it made a difference. It does. And so, some of our clients, and like you said, Timothy, they're actually taking a different stance. They're saying full speed ahead. They're, they're, our clients are very worried about the supply chain after this thing falls down. They're worried about the product. They're worrying about the lighting, the appliances, the fabrics, the furniture. And they actually have done the opposite. They haven't pulled back. They're saying, guys, let's move this forward faster so that we're ahead of the line and we can get our product and, you know, so, so, so we're ready to go when this thing all, you know, blows over. Martin, that's actually, that's actually a really good point. You know, you mentioned also earlier that India is now shut down, you know, Italy is uh, shut down and you don't know how fast they're going to open again and then what gets prioritized. Um, so, you know, if, if you can move things now, you probably would move things now. Um, what do you, so I got a couple of questions here. Um, from, from the community. So some ask, you know, what do you, uh, do you think that interior design will completely explode after the coronavirus is over? You know, is staying indoor with drab interiors can be maddening. Somebody else asks, you know, how do you feel about the future of design? How is this going to change our industry? Um, so think, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think people are gonna want to do more and more in their homes because they're spending more time in their homes. It's important to them. and. I think it's gonna, I think they're right. I think it could explode. I do too. I totally agree. I think people are being home. They're looking at the clients that aren't, you know, they're analyzing with their spaces even more. And I think they're they're finding beauty and comfort is even more of a priority than before it was. I, I don't think it's gonna slow down at all. Yeah, I think my biggest concern is um, the small businesses, the small workrooms, all the people that we're relying on now and just, helping, we're trying to make sure that we, that they stay open, uh, that they will be able to survive the crunch. Cause I think that's where the biggest, uh, the biggest hiccup could be afterwards is that if we, if we lose any of those, those wonderful suppliers that we rely on so much for our business, the, you know, the, the curtain makers, all those other people who, who, who really are the lifeline of our business. And I, I mean, a one lot of my major concerns is if I can add to this is that we need to be really careful that we only work with vendors that we can trust and that we know um, and how we, you know, maybe using credit cards instead of sending checks for deposits. So there's a recourse if they go out of business. I mean, people are going to go out of business because of the, some of the smaller, you know, um, workrooms and things like that. And we need to be really careful and only work with people that we know and trust and I don't know. There's going to be a problem down the road, I think. Don't you guys think? Yeah, I, I agree. We ran our... Um vendor lists and we have 700 vendors we worked with in 2019 and i did it by vendors i did it by dollar volume who they were and i looked at the top 50 people and i since the top 50 within those i've called the people directly i've called the showrooms i've called the manufacturers and seeing how everybody's doing and letting them know what's coming down the pike for us so they know they understand there is their orders coming projects aren't stopping it's giving them comfort level to know because there's a lot, in, before this happened, we had a lot of proposals out there. We had a lot of work and I'm just reassuring those vendors that this is really, this is real and, and things have not slowed down. So I think it's a communication between our clients and then you call your vendors who you're working with and let them know that these are real. These orders are coming through. I don't know if you all do this, but we've really um, put everything on credit cards now because at least the credit card company will have your back. We've been burned several times by vendors that cash our checks, they go out of business and at least you have a recourse if it's on a credit card. Great counsel. 
Yeah, very smart, very smart advice. Um, I mean, I, I'm just going through a couple of questions that I got, you know, because, um, you know, people, people actually ask questions. I love that, guys. Um, you know, after this experience, you know, working from home and so on, would you now start considering hiring a team member who lives in a different city or, or to, you know, to work remotely? Like, do you think in the future that's going to be super like doable or do you think it's just going to complicate everything with, you know, sampling and so on? That's a good question. We have somebody that works remotely for us and I, I don't think it would work for most team members, but we have, you know, an architect that used to be with us full time that works from a different location and it works for us. Um, right. You know, one or two is fine, but I don't think, you know, I think it depends on what they do. Some people have their yeah, business totally, managers totally that agree. work remotely. Yeah. Yeah, I think that if if they're not a, a part of the design process per se, if they're more executing uh, drawings and things like that, or, or if they were a business consultant, absolutely. But I think that there's something that even our all of our designers are saying that they miss on our staff meetings. They miss being able to come in and actually exchange with each other um, and and share product, etc. So I think that um, it's still it's still I think very much a hands-on, face-to-face kind of industry. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, in the past, a lot of our people wanted to work from home. They, that was kind of a big push. And this is like forced innovation on our office. And now that we're doing it, the people that were the biggest proponents for working at home are actually not enjoying it. And part of that is, part of it is, is, is the child care. A lot of our um, people that work for us have young children at home. And it's, it, it's a real problem because they're realizing that their children being home, husband's working from home, the wife's working from home, and what a distraction it is. And you see in the back of the background, kids are yelling, kids are screaming, my dog starts barking. I, I was talking to our banker yesterday, and one of his kids is running the back of my dad, 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 and you know, he's the president of the bank, and he's like flipping out about his kid. And I said, you know, Zach, don't worry about it, because every meeting I have, there's either a dog or a kid or a spouse or something happening in the back, and it's just kind of the new normal. Interesting. Um, if we if we take you know a conversation back to the clients, um, you know how are you? So have you hold any you know have you had any problems you know with people wanting to hold? Timothy, you said that you had one client who who, who you know said like let's put it on hold. How do you react to that? Do you get new business interest in how you deal with that? You know where everything is so uh, unclear right now. I think that the new business aspect is one of the most concerning aspects of us for our business, because even if our current clients are saying they will continue, uh, the bottom line is I don't think we're, anyone's going to get any new business right now. And uh, I, mean, I hope I hope, would love to be wrong on that. But uh, and, and routinely you have you have new business coming into and feeding the pipeline. So as one project ends, you've got other ones to feed it or, and you know, there's always, we've always had different projects at different stages. My biggest concern, frankly, for us as, as, as for my firm is what happens after the virus and, uh, and, and what new business, we, we, will have, we will have not had any new business come in. And so those projects will, as they finish, we, we will have a need for new business. So I think that's my concern. What I'll say, I think we all have a backlog of a, at least a month or two, which will keep us. But oh, after that, it's going to get scary. Yeah. So what are you guys doing? I mean, you know, so I think, you know, last week was the week of shock. This week is the week of settling in. Next week is like, you know, I, I hope that next week we all think about, you know, like, again, like on the vendor side, like us, you know, I mean, same thing. I mean, we, we are lucky that we could keep everything uh, running, uh, including our warehouse and so on. But you know, there's also others that are still trying to figure out, you know, how to get back in, back into the business. So I hope that next week, you know, people said, you know, kind of start thinking about, okay, what's what's after? Um, and I think with that, you will probably also put some time away uh, to start thinking about, okay, how can I start networking? How can I engage with clients so that you get your pipeline somehow going again? What what do you suggest, especially to the smaller companies out there? Um, and you know the smaller businesses that are participating today, what they can do, um, you know, to somehow you know already start the engine going because obviously we are all we are all anxious. Well, this is a referral basis. Pretty much, we all get our jobs, you know, from other clients and other people. Uh, one thing we get a lot of work from real estate agents, and we get work from other builders. 
So having those good relationships, I mean, people are still, you know, buying homes, people are still going to do work. We had a, it's kind of a, a, a interesting opportunity. We had our first virtual client interview last week. Uh, we had never met the client. The client was interviewing us virtually. It was a referral from a real estate agent. And we actually, I, Shay and I said the day we landed the project yesterday. I said, if you can land a project in this downturn, and, it's, and it was a really, really nice project. It's not a small, it's like 6,000 square foot apartment. And I feel so lucky and grateful that that could work. But I think the reason why could, that we had our, all of our operations already kind of set up so we can explain digitally how we're working. And it gave the client a lot of comfort knowing that we're working remotely. We showed them our process. We showed them that we're here and we tested it because we were literally in the process of coming up with a digital presentation and we, we used it for the first time last week. And the minute we got off, we called up our graphic designer and we said, hey, Drew, you knocked it out of the ballpark. It worked beautifully and it was a weeder in the making. And fortunately, I'm gonna knock on wood on that, but that, that project's moving forward and we're gonna have our first meeting in two weeks. So, uh, well, it is happening. So I, I talked to a principal at Perkins and Will yesterday and they landed three new jobs last week so the commercial work's still going people knowing that's a downturn and i think they're seeing opportunities at least the perkins and will person said they're trying to get ahead of everybody because the projects aren't stopping people are still going to buy a house people are still going to buy an apartment they're still going to do work so it's the networking and touching people and not being so afraid of it but reaching out you never know where your next project's going to come from so keeping that open communication with everybody you know and being positive is, is something I think is, is really important. So Martin, you would suggest that, you know, I mean, if I am, you know, one person show, um, you know, that I, you know, reach out to my old clients that I'm letting through Instagram people know that I am here and happy to help and, and so on. So you would, you would go, you know, you would be outgoing and really try to, you know, touch as many people as you can. I mean, absolutely. If you touch base, I mean, like I said, we get a lot of work through real estate agents and other builders and developers and just touching base with them, letting them know that things are, that things are moving forward. It's not the doom and gloom. It's not the end of the world. And just to have that positive attitude to each. I mean, you never know where your job's going to come from. I mean, we, I got one of my biggest clients to my dog walker and you just never know what, where it's going to come from. So just being open and put it out in the universe and say, you know, bring it on. So I know that seems a little out there, but I think just keeping really positive and good things happen. I think another important thing we need to work on right now is our social media. We've noticed a big uptick in our Instagram right now. I think people are really concentrating on their computers using yeah. Instagram and other things. And it's a good time to get more followers and show people what you can do and what you're about especially for small businesses that are only one or two people. This is a great time to work on your social media. You never have enough time, but now's the time to do it. True. And I think Jessica also to, to piggyback maybe on that, you know, I think one part is to, you know, for everyone out, you know, out there, um, you know, one thing is that you create a beautiful page yourself, but it's also an incredible search tool to be out there and, you know, see who else is there, who else is, Yeah. got the extra time now yeah and we have the colleagues from lux on here today too so um you know i think it's important um to really be out there i think that's that's true timothy do you have anything um, I, th I think my only concern is that uh it is being appropriate on instagram is that it is you have to be a little sensitive um and 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 be we remember that people are sort of on edge they're not comfortable and so it's really being sure that you're focusing that what you're posting is um, seems appropriate that it's not it's not all gloom and doom and that it's actually reassuring and and positive yeah do you do your instagram yourself or do you have like an instagram uh, social media strategist or like how do how do you use how do you do that i do my own instagram how about you guys um i have the team in the office that does it i have a team in the office as well yeah um 
so I got just like a couple of more questions here, um, you know, about, so, um, you know, vendors put something on hold and you can't move forward. How do I keep processing payments with my clients to keep my business moving forward? I heard, you know, that there's a client who got called, uh, called uh, Lucy and got emotional because she knows that uh, you, you know, it's a new business and we really wanted to keep, you know, them busy, but she couldn't. And so, um, you know, how do you, how do you deal with all of these like difficulties of like clients not wanting to move forward? You keep to, you need to keep paying your um, staff. How do you handle that? Do you I, I, discuss I, that with your clients? I have a strong point of view on this, but I, and I don't know whether other people feel the same. So let me just, I'd love to tell you what my thought is. And is one thing that I've felt very strongly about is that I don't want to bill a client for a propo propose a, 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 a product to a client unless I feel that I can action it now. So if I, I, for example, I don't want to propose fabric for a chair that I know that that workroom is closed and cannot therefore um, make that, you know, use that fabric and to create and create that chair. Because I feel like, I, I feel like it's not ethically a good use. Um, I'm not being fair to my client, but, but whereas I feel like hard goods, things like that, where, where they can do it, where they can, they can proceed and, and order it, um, I don't feel any problem doing that. Um, do, other, do you guys share that concern of, about ethics being ethical or not in terms of, it's one thing, yes, we need to be keeping the, the cash flow in, but I don't know whether, I don't know that I feel comfortable proposing something that I can't actually action. I think it's all about transparency. You need to be transparent with the client and tell them that. Yeah, we're not we're not ordering anything that's going to be on back order. Anything that needs to be made. One thing that we're really pushing for is to try to shop local and use our local vendors. Um, you know, we're doing an accessory package right now, and we had things coming from all over. But now we're calling up all of our local people, or you know, all the local antique dealers, all the local shops. We want to keep the business going. And we are nervous about, you know, using somebody that we're not quite sure, like on Etsy or another place. So we're only working with people that we actually trust and, and know. And it's like when I went this morning down to my workroom, I actually wanted to go see the furniture that was made. So I think, you know, Timothy, you're 100% right. We're not proposing anything that we're really we're nervous about at all. I, I don't think that's right, good for anybody, because in the end, it's just going to hurt your own business. A little glitch we had today. You should make sure that your receivers are receiving things. We were told one of our receivers wasn't. We were told another receiver was. So be aware. Check with your receivers. Yes, because that, that, yeah, that's it's, actually different from state to state, even. Mm -hmm. And probably yes, within the state. Some, um, some sure, deem it an essential are, business some and some don't. Yes. It's very interesting, you know, um, If I because if I listen to all of you, you know, we touched on that several times today, you know, it's... You don't, you know, I think you really, your advice to also everybody out there is don't sit there and wait, you know, go out, speak with your clients proactively, you know, see how they're doing, go out, speak with your vendors proactively, see how they're doing. They're yes. going to tell you how their business is going, go out, speak with your workrooms, you know, how they're doing and which one is working, which one is not go out and speak with your logistics, you know, um, people. so I think it's really about, you know, you know, spend time to go out and understand what's going on so that you can then really bring, you know, the, the pieces that work together. And with that, you can keep your business going. That's kind of what I understand from. Absolutely. I think communication is more important now than ever. And we need so, to be communicating with all of our different, all of our different touch points, our clients, our employees, our suppliers, they, they all need to be, we need to continue that, that dialogue. So, you know, let me ask you really serious questions. I'm looking at the time and I see it's already, you know, at 30 minutes to four. So my God, the time is flying. Um, so also guys, you know, if you raise your hand, uh, Lucy will, um, you know, um, mute you, unmute you and you can also make a comment and so on. I have one last question from my side, you know, um, pretty blunt, pretty direct, I'm German. Um, um, you know, are you cutting cost? How are you cutting cost? How do you think about all of that? Or do you actually say, and that's a question that I also saw here, or do you say, oh my God, um, you know, the, the labor market is getting better now because other people are being laid off. Now is the time for me to hire two or three people that are really good so that I'm prepared for after. So 
how are you doing this? Or are you balancing that out? Um, I think, and the more concrete and, and real answers you can give, because I do think I've heard this a lot. People have written me letters and emails being really concerned at knowing what to do. So I would say one of our biggest expenditures obviously is, is personnel. And our biggest objective has been how we maintain our personnel. So we've looked at how to cut all the other costs where possible. The, the personnel is the most important thing to, to hold on to. Um, so we've looked at things like rent. We've gone to our, our landlord and we actually got a 50% a, a reduction in our rent for the next three months. Um, and so that's, that's one way to do it. Um, we've looked at cutting all um, unnecessary recurring costs. Things like uh, the UPS pickup, which is a daily pickup. It's a $30 a week saving, but that adds up. Um, we've, we've stopped all those other things, our, our office cleaning services, our parking, all those other things that you're not utilizing right now, you should be looking at how you can cut those costs because they may be all individual small things, but they all drop to the bottom line. We've done exactly the same. We've reached out to our landlord, we've cut our parking spots, we've cut our janitorial services, um, anything we can do. It doesn't hurt to ask your landlord, everyone should. You know, we all have to pitch in and do what we can. Exactly the same thing, cutting all non-essential costs, um, going to our bank, talking about lines of credit, making sure we got the lowest rate possible. Interest rates are dropping drastically. Uh, we own our building, so we're negotiating and reevaluating, getting the, the lower interest rates. So it's taking every opportunity you can. Like Timothy said, our people are number one. Um, we were looking for people in Chicago. It was next to impossible to find good people. So in some ways, it's been good since we don't need to hire these people currently. I feel really comfortable with our workload and who we have. Um, but taking good care of your people is, is, is critical. I've also talked to other designers in Chicago who um, may have excess capacity. And we talk about sharing uh, employees. Um, we need some drawings being done. I need 25 hours of some detailing. So I talked to a couple other designers and they, to have excess capacity, so we're going to share employees, so nobody's right. letting anybody go. I think the other thing that we all need to look into is the stimulus package that the government's offering, and we talked about this before our conversation today. I think this could be a huge benefit to us as design firms. Um, I think we'll know the details in the next day or two, but don't think that you're not eligible for it because I think we may all we all may be. Yeah. I've talked to our banks, I've talked to our accountants, I got off the phone today about that, and the stimulus package is going to be signed, uh, it's passed today, it's now up for the president. If it does pass, it's, it's a really amazing stimulus for a small business, it's under 500 people, which we all have. It's basically, it's taking two and a half months of last year's payroll, and let's say your payroll is $50,000 a month, you can get a loan or two and a half times that. So you get a payroll, you get a loan for $125,000. And then what they'll do is over uh, 2020, that loan will be forgiven to, if you're using that for payroll, rent, mortgage, and utilities. So it's virtually free money. Uh, it's at 4% interest. There's, uh, it's through your bank. We've already talked to the bank getting it all set up. So I encourage everybody, small business, uh, to start doing that because it's going to pass and it's going to be a lifeline for a lot of people. Yeah, call I'm your so bankers glad. now. Yeah, call, yeah I'm call so glad bank. that Jessica, you call and Martin bring this up. So glad that you bring this up because I think, you know, I got a lot of questions here on like, how am I ensuring the future cash flow? You know, how am I going to go through this? And I think, you know, this is a very big alternative also to letting, you know, team members go, which is hard to then train again. And, and so on, I think, you know, talking with your accountant and talking with your banker, probably, you know, it's, uh, it's 350 in New York, it's 250 in Chicago, and it's, uh, you know, 1250 uh, in, on the West Coast. So the banks are still open, call them, um, because I really do think they could change, um, you know, how you think about your business and, and also how, how you get through this. Um, I got a lot of other questions also here that I see about, you know, uh, how are you scheduling everything now that everything is so unclear so we don't know when the lockdown is done we we don't know how to do with with contractors and electricians nobody knows like 
do you just plan for, I don't know, May, first week of May, and then you just reschedule again? Or do you keep everything on hold and you hope that you're prioritized? Because I could also imagine that every electrician, as soon as it goes up, you know, goes up again, they're all busy. So how do you deal with that? Well, transport is still, transport is still uh, an essential. And so we actually just sent off a truck full of, of, uh, of furniture, et cetera, for, for upstate New York yesterday. Uh, and um, and we're arranging with local people to actually do the 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 rough installation, and then as soon as it does, uh, the, the travel ban does come, we'll actually go and do a final install. But I think there are a lot of parts of our job that can continue, uh, and so we're trying to do as many of those as we can. We've had some problems in the city of Chicago with multi-unit buildings. Most of the multi-unit buildings won't allow anybody in. Um, Single-family homes are different, um, but the multi-unit buildings are giving us a hard time. Yeah, it's really tough. So like some buildings are open, some buildings are closed. Like uh, we're doing some work in high rise towers right now. And it's literally changing by the hour and you really don't know what's happening. We're working in five states right now and every state is different. Yeah. So it's really complicated. And our leads are constantly talking to the project managers of these different um, locations because one day you can do this and one day you can't do that. So it's open communication amongst your teams, open communication between all your contractors you're working with. It makes it complicated because when a building shuts down in Chicago high rise, you're just, you can't do anything. And that team who was working on that project can't get in to do work, you know, then what do you do with those people? So it, it's constantly a challenge. Yeah. Um, Martin, just because, you know, because we just talked about it, Lucy, um, Hal asked us, you know, whether you have heard if that loan that you just mentioned is a separate loan from the SBA disaster assistance loan. That I'm not correct. aware of that. It's separate. It's, it's separate. It. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's passing. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. I'm, I don't know how I can get the information out to everybody, but I've uh, got pretty extensive notes and been confirmed by both our attorneys and our bankers like what it, what it entails. So I, I don't know uh, any, how we could get that out to you. Give the information to um, Benny. Do you think it's something you could maybe might be able to post to, on on one of your sites? Well, let me, there was a good article in the Wall Street Journal today and any you know qualified accountant or banker should have the information. I know my accountant's all over it by the minute. I mean, they're listening yeah. to all this daily by the hour. So there was a good article in the Wall Street Journal today about this, about this loan. Yeah, okay. I think so. I'm also, you know, very happy, you know, uh, also through Instagram, please, um, please uh, 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 approach me, you know, so we're going to find channels also banker accountants, I think is important um, to check, you know, because they can also give you information that, you know, as a hundred percent, knowing your books and knowing you and knowing, you know, everything of that. So it's probably even more reliable as, as yeah, if, you know, I give you remote advice from uh, from, from New York. I think certain but, banks have been called on to administer this loan. I know JP Morgan Chase is one of them because that's who I use. So if you're with JP Morgan or Chase, call your banker. Yeah. Um, I got another question. So uh, moving away from, from finance, I think, by the way, thank you so much, uh, Jessica, Martin, and Tim, to the three of you yeah. for discussing that so openly because, uh, you know, that's like topics that nobody really loves talking about. You know, they're also kind of you know, uh, not the most fun topic. So I, but I think it's really helpful to discuss. And, uh, you know, the reaction that I see here also people really do appreciate that. So thank you very much. Um, I get here a lot of other, also more practical questions about like, okay, so how do you handle floor plans and measurements remotely now <laughs> that, you know, you, like, what, how do you do that? Like, do you send your client out uh, on a weekend trip and then you go in with a face mask or how do you do that, Tim? Uh, what's interesting is, is we're actually doing um, a lot of those, those sorts of things. We're actually doing, uh, we actually did one something very similar to this where we, they were actually were on a Skype call and we were giving them with visually, we were having them measure things <laughs> because we, it's important that, that you supervise how they measure it. So you know exactly that they're measuring correctly. Uh, but that's an easy thing you actually can do. Um, I just did it this morning, even um, <laughs> with a, in a room. So where they gave the dimensions, and I said, or, or we looked, literally said, "Is it from here to here?" We've got it, wrote it down. So th there are ways you can do that virtually. Something I need to bring up, and I'm not that familiar with it, so excuse my ignorance. But my office wanted me to mention it. There's something called OneDrive. Is anyone using this to share CAD plans? Um, it's, I'm not 
very, you know, CAD savvy, but it's called OneDrive SharePoint. It's a cloud-based system for sharing CAD plans. Yeah. I'm not familiar so, with it, but you might want yeah, to look at I, yeah, I think OneDrive, you know, is basically kind of a, uh, now I use IT terminology that I also don't, shouldn't use, but it's kind of like, like a cloud-based, you know, service where everybody can access it, you know, from, from yeah. remote, um, from like remote places. Cloud. So, you know, for example, we have our, you know, we, we have our own cloud provider on that. And I'm sure, you know, because sending those huge files around is super difficult and you probably don't get them through the ether. So if you have a team and it's a small team and you haven't had like a shared drive or something like that. If you Google shared drive or OneDrive or you know cloud service or something like that, I think Jessica, it's a really good point. Um, you know, you're gonna get, and it's not expensive, and uh, you know, it's like Google OneDrive and so on. So there's uh, several providers out there that that can help you with that. It comes with your Microsoft soft, your Microsoft subscription. I was told. Uh huh. And um, very interesting. I want to share this real quick with you. You know, because it's a live interaction. Uh, Kurt uh, Schnackenberg um, just uh, wrote, um, I sat in on a conference with the US Chamber of Commerce this morning explaining it all. If you want, I can forward the recording of it once they distribute it. So we would love that and we were very happy to distribute that. Um, you know, if you send it to info at schumacher.com. Um, and then he also wrote, uh, all SBA approved banks are approved. Um, they are adding more. So thank you, Kurt, for, nice. uh, for this comment. Um, so, you know, it's 3.59. Let me ask you one last question. And I don't want to, you know, end this conversation that was, you know, like fun and insightful and we really got to the bones also of things, um, like on such a note. So tell me, where do you see the silver lining for you personally and from a business perspective with all of that? I would love to hear that. I think the silver lining is it's gonna bring our community closer together. I think that's gonna be huge. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, we see it today, what's happening. I see also being more digital savvy, working remotely, having sharing information. I think it's a big positive that we can do this. And, you know, the media has gone digital. Now we're going digital offices, digital work. So I, it's kind of the wave of the future. I think we, by embracing it and using that as a tool that we've never really used before is going to become a positive of, of all of this. We're going to be stronger and better. We are. And I think, I think it's using that, that aspect positively. But to me, the biggest thing that's reassured me was the importance of each individual and how each person and their talent um, is becomes even more valuable. I'm seeing that now. I, and you can actually see what people bring to the table when we're doing it digitally like this. Uh, and I actually appreciate all my staff much more uh, for what they do every single day. So I think it's I think it's been a win in that perspective. I think the other two will agree with me. This couldn't be happening without a great staff. And I have a shout out to them for keeping it all together for us and um, having amazing clients and amazing staff. And also vendors such as you, Benny, I'm serious. It, you keep our community strong. Yes, yes. A, a huge Thanks. thank you to, to Schumacher and you, Benny, because I think that it's important that we all stick together. And, and it's, it's companies like you who understand the importance of keeping the community going. Also like the Merchandise Mart and ASID, the magazines, Lux, CS, everything. I mean, they've all been so helpful. To, and it's, they're gonna make us stronger too. And I'm also amazed, you know, how people, you know, put, you know, I don't know, you know, just like all the little things to the side and collaborate, you know, whether they were co uh, um, competitors or whether they're in different fields. I love, I love to see the collaboration and I think, I'm, it means also a lot to me, guys, that you that you point Schumacher out. I mean, you know, Schumacher is America's oldest design company and you have created parachutes during the Second World War to help. And now we are actually also sewing masks in our warehouse um, to help, um, to help uh, you know, uh, people out there. And it's really for us, you know, I think that's something we can do. We know most of the designers and we can bring each other together. Um, I would love to get feedback from everybody who has been joining the call today, whether you want us to do more of these things on different topics uh, in a similar format, in a different format. Um, again, uh, I always joke about, you know, I'm German, I can very well cope with direct feedback. So tell us, you know, whether you what you like, what you didn't like, what we can do different, and mostly whether you want us to keep doing that, because 
Um, I think it's a great opportunity to connect. I just also, we got a comment from a, uh, from a, from a designer out of Australia saying, you know, we just made this, uh, the world a little smaller, um, which I find incredible. Makes me, you know, uh, uh, that's, I think this is amazing. Uh, so thank you to everyone. And Timothy, Jessica, Martin, thank you very much from you, uh, for, um, to you for putting yourself out there, being open, going on camera, on a home, you know, working from home day. I just want to make up and do my hair today, you guys. This is like the first and <laughs> yeah. day. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> um, and um, thank you, you know, thank just a huge thank you to everybody no, out there. You, it's an Benny. amazing it's good community. Good to see Martin and Tim, thank and you, thank you all for thank chiming you, in and listening. And I just. I just want everybody to stay positive because we have to remember all of us who went through 2008, 9, and 10, how bad it was. Remember, it was the end of the world. We were never going to work again. And what happened was we got through it. And the, actually, the economy was better than ever. We were all working busy, busy, busy. So stay positive. This too shall pass. And we'll, we'll come out with you know, better, better people, better collaboration. And it's, it's, it's look at it as a positive thing. Yes, absolutely. I second that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. And I'm sorry Thanks. that we couldn't, I'm sorry that we couldn't answer every single question. We tried the best, but stay, you know, on, we're going to do more of this. Thank Great. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye guys. Bye-bye.